Scourge 2, White Bianca is one of the few people to remain on the pier as the ship comes in. She doesn't consider it bravery not to flee as the vessel approaches in and moves with unnatural motions through the docks. She has a mission to take care of, and that takes precedence over all the rest. The fear is kept though, a chill that grows ever colder as she buries it deep in her core. It might come into use later. The ship stops with a jerk right on the edge of the empty pier and remains immobile, even as its wake shoots out ahead and rocks the other ships in their moorings. Bianca hasn't seen many such vessels, though she had been in Vizdar for a few days already. Still, she knows that the way this one is moving is deeply wrong. Judging by the way the few sailors she can see are looking at it, they know as much too. This is where she's supposed to meet the one her father told her of. The representative of the Dark Goddess. He also told her to read the accounts about the Dark Goddess, but to read them critically. She had plenty of time to read on the way here. The stories vary a little, but they all seem to agree that the Dark Goddess is a terrible, cowardly being, a trickster, and an oath breaker. The insults never quite match, they all accuse the Goddess of different things. Bianca thinks that that's what the clue her father gave her amounts to. If no two religious texts can agree on why the Dark Goddess is evil, then perhaps their opinion isn't entirely valid. She's not unfamiliar with the concept of propaganda, and in this case, it's not hard to see where the Dark Goddess reputation is coming from. There are three or four churches who hold her up as the enemy of mankind. Then again, monsters are responsible for thousands of deaths every year, they are a constant danger and Bianca hasn't seen anything that indicates that the Dark Goddess doesn't take responsibility for their actions. She's not entirely sure what to think yet, but she knows that it's a subject worth thinking on. The clatter of wood on wood has her looking up just as a gangplank hits the pier. She's the one nearest the ship now, her hands folded just so over her stomach and her back straight. It means that she's likely the only one to see the limbs retreating back into the ship after moving the gangplank. Monsters. There are monsters within 20 paces of her, and they are acting with both purpose and intelligence. Her heart beats faster. Oh, hey, the plank's lowered already. Come on. We need to hurry before the fog moves on, someone says from on board the ship. Bianca stands taller, her face an expressionless mask, her eyes peeled. She will be the first to see this representative, she will befriend her, and she will use anything at her disposal to ensure that her father's plan, whatever it may be, comes to fruition. Three figures move out of the thicker fog. All three have cloaks on, though two have their hoods lowered. Women, all three of them, and seemingly young. The servant her father told of and two handmaidens, the first is a young woman who immediately rushes past Bianca with a cry of dry land. She's, at a glance, perhaps Bianca's own age, or a year younger. Sixteen or so, with a freckled face and wild, untamed hair. Her glasses are so thick that Bianca can't make out her eyes before she's already passed. Not the representative, she decides. Someone sent by the Dark Goddess herself would be a serious figure, someone important and politically astute, not an overly excited girl. The next figure Bianca sees has more potential though she dismisses them after a look. Another young woman, taller, with sharper features and a wicked smile. She feels dangerous in a way that Bianca can't put a finger on, but she trusts her instincts enough to acknowledge that the young woman might be a threat. She must be a servant of the Dark Goddess and regardless of her gender or age, she might be dangerous. The blindfold across her eyes gives Bianca pause, but she decides not to judge her based on that alone. She has a lithe build under her cloak, all wiry muscle. She's around Bianca's own age as well, though she's not as developed in the chest and hips as Bianca. The last member isn't as tall as Bianca imagines a servant of the Dark Goddess should be, but then, she doesn't have a lot to go on. They come down the gangplank, then stretch their arms out above them. Oh, it's nice not to be bobbing around all over. Yeah. I kind of liked it. Maybe I should learn some water magic, it's fun the blindfolded girl says water magic needs fear to work, you know. I don't think I've ever really seen you scared of much. The voice is a girl's, and from the glimpse of her chin and lips, 
Bianca can tell that her guess is correct. Oh, ah, uh, hi the girl says, she turns towards the blindfolded girl next to her, then refocuses on Bianca. Sorry, we'll be on our way. Wait Bianca says. This is her chance. The Dark Goddess is under no obligation to use servants that fit the image Bianca has created in her mind. She curtsies, as is appropriate. My name is Bianca Malicio, I was sent to assist you while you are in the Caselfella Republic. Ha, huh, the girl says. Oh. Malicio, like the Marquise. You know of my father then Bianca says. She only hesitates for a moment before entering the familiar pattern of a woman at court. On a pier next to some unimportant border city they may be, but the event is nonetheless important enough to do things right just in passing the girl says. It's nice to meet you. Mom said that there'd be someone here to greet us and help us along, I didn't think it'd be someone my age. Bianca takes that in stride. It will be an honor to assist you, miss. Oh. I'm Valeria, Valeria Malveda. Bianca's head nods. She just read half a dozen books about the Dark Goddess, it would be impossible for her to forget the goddess' true name, though most books only mention it in passing or with the reluctance of someone incredibly superstitious your mother is. Luciana Malveda. The girl, Valeria, nods. But I just call her mom. She lets us call her Miss Malveda the girl next to Valeria says oh. Right. This is my best friend, Felix, and my other best friend over there is Esme. She's not rude, I swear, she just really didn't like the whole boat thing. I think it's her core acting up to all the water and stress. The dark goddess daughter claps her hands so. Do you know of a good inn we could stay at? She asks and a good place for food Felix adds. Bianca remains entirely composed, impressing even herself a little. Of course. Please, follow me. Will the ship be remaining here? Nah, Gloop's going to head back to sea in a minute. My little friends should be off and hiding in the city already. Gloop. Bianca whispers as she turns around and leads her two new companions off the pier. They find the Esme girl climbing back to her feet, knees and the front of her blouse dirty from where she was hugging the road Esme, you're all messy Valeria says a bit of dirt is nothing to the reassuring knowledge that the ground isn't going to move under me the wild haired girl said. She adjusts her glasses, then takes Bianca in. Oh, hello. Greetings Bianca says. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Esme. Esme Fidelis the girl said. It's nice to meet you too. She turns towards Valeria. Who is this? Esme, that's rude. This is Bianca Malicio. She's here to help us. Us, or help you. Esme asks forgive my impertinence, but what is the difference? Bianca asks. The Esme girl puffs her chest out, and Bianca has to admit that there's a lot there to puff out. I'm here on a mission from Semper. Bianca has to work to keep her expression neutral. That's wonderful. If I can assist you, then please just ask. While my priority is in assisting Miss Malveda, I would be honored to help you as well. Oh, this one's nice as me says. Say, Bianca, do you like reading? On, occasion. Then we're all going to get along swimmingly. Bianca can't help but feel like she's entirely out of her depth. Still, her own mission is quite simple. Well then, shall I show you the way to the inn? It's nothing too impressive, but it's comfortable, and there are warm meals and warmer beds. Asterisk asterisk asterisk.